Talk about a bad customer service experience you recently had. And the first sentence is enough. The rest of the sentence, you don't have that much preparation time. This is task two of yourself if speaking. So you want to save that time because you only have 30 seconds and use it to understand what you got to say. Prepare for that. And usually these second and third sentences in question number two, they're just a waste of time. They just tell you extra information, which you will automatically answer once you try to speak on the topic. So I understand that we have to talk about a bad customer service experience. Now I'm going to play my sample and first I'll play it. Then I'll tell you how you can guarantee you speak this way as well. Then I'll tell you how and why this scores a 12 every time a response like this is submitted to the self examiner. So let's check it out. I'll play this first and then an important tip coming up. Let's get started. I usually don't eat greasy food, but there was this one time when I went to KFC and since it was my first time, I was taking my time looking at the menu. While I was doing this, I noticed a cashier who from the get go looked as if she was on the edge. She looked at me and made a very snarky comment. She said, are you going to take all day? When she said this, I was simply flabbergasted. I approached her and told her this is extremely rude of you and unprofessional. In that moment, I felt quite upset. However, to my surprise, she did not apologize or do anything that a customer service representative should do. In fact, she just left and asked another colleague to look after me. Unfortunately, because I take things personally, that made me keep thinking about that incident the whole day and I felt extremely bad. Hopefully that does not repeat. Okay, that's it. That was 59 or 58 seconds. And one reason I'm always able to hit the timeline is because I don't plan for 60 seconds. I plan for 55 and then I always exceed it as most of you do. So that leaves me with enough room to ensure I finish on time every time. It is considered a major mistake if you don't finish on time or if you leave out your conclusion. So that's one tip right there. But let me tell you how you can speak like this. And we want to see how you're speaking right now. So what you want to do is comment down below, self-pip speaking, comment that here. I'll give you details on how you can send me your self-pip speaking recordings for free feedback, as many as you would like. Comment self-pip speaking below and I'll tell you what to do. Now I'll break down this assessment and throughout me speaking, I was trying to multitask. I was showing you guys the timer as well. So you could see how this was being observed by me and how I was pacing myself as the time went by. Now let's get started. I usually don't eat greasy food. Right there, it is different. It's not something that I always hear. Today I would like to talk about. Don't say that. Make it different. Now greasy, there are subtitles there for a reason. Greasy is like oily food if you don't know what it means. And I use this because it's an advanced word. Secondly, it is an adjective. So it's both unique and it describes what I'm talking about as an adjective, which gives me a range of vocab the more adjectives and adverbs I use. Let's continue. But there was this one time when I went to KFC. Is this a complex sentence? Absolutely. The first sentence is complex because first I described the food. Then I said, but this is what happened. I went there. Now, when you come make a sentence complex, you use connectors like but and and uh, or you use words like although considering break two clauses into one by making it complex and using connectors like those. Now, this is a good start and I have established my intro, setting up the tone. Here's what happened. I went to KFC now. And since notice the pause there too, between sentences, there's a transition. There's a pause on purpose because you want to show the examiner. Now you are jumping to another point. Now check this out. This sentence starts with since since will again allow me to make another complex sentence because when you say since you do two things since this happened, then this happened. Let's check it out. It was my first time. I was taking my time looking at the menu. Good use of phrasal verbs, expressions. I was taking my time instead of me saying I was looking at the menu for a long time. I was taking my time. More idiomatic expressions. The more you do those, the better. While I was doing this, I know complex sentence after complex after complex. You don't have to overdo these, but this comes naturally for me and you can practice that as well. 
So when you start a sentence with while, you again make it complex. You say, while I was doing this, then something else happened. So two clauses again. Just a cashier who from the get-go, from the get-go, again, unique wordings, looked as if she was on the edge. Phrasal verb. I loved it when I said this, she was on the edge. Instead of me saying she was angry, use something advanced. And it's not only a word, it's a phrase. So I'm throwing different range of words, phrases, and vocabulary at the examiner. She looked at me and made a very snarky comment. Snarky, like sarcastic, again, use of advanced words and phrases. She said, are you going to take all day? Now, this is a simple sentence. Are you going to take all day? She said this, that's it. And uh, you need that mixture of simple and complex sentences. When she said this, I was simply flabbergasted. Now, flabbergasted means surprise. Again, advanced word. Simply is an adverb because it has li in it. The more li's you use, the better. It gives you a good range of vocab. Check out my emphasis too. Just before making this video, I sent an email to a student. I was like, you are so robotic. You have to emphasize. You have to not be monotone. And that is what I'm trying to do. Trying to really be expressive. Trying to live in this moment. Although it never happened, I made it up. But trying to feel as if it did. And then like, that would be your reaction. Like, what? I was flabbergasted. So make sure you have those expressions. I approached her and told her, this is extremely rude of extremely rude adjective extra um, rude and adverb is extremely so not just rude but extremely rude more descriptive and a good use and mixture of adverb and adjective you and unprofessional in that moment I felt see how I'm pausing between sentences rude and unprofessional pause like a second and then I jump to my next sentence quite upset by the way, there was a connector there. If you noticed, at that moment or in that moment, whatever I said there, that is again a transition. And you can use one-worded connectors to more over or afterward. However, to my surprise, again, however, good connections between sentences, there's an excellent flow. And now I've used the connector, however. So I'm using connectors with phrases and single words, giving again the examiner a range of vocab. Now, right here, you have an expression, to my surprise, which is, again, not just saying that I was surprised, but again, to my surprise, using good idiomatic expressions. She did not apologize or do anything that a customer service representative should do. In fact, she just left and asked another colleague to look after me. So here, the good transition that I had is in fact. So she didn't do this. In fact, this is what she did. Or indeed, this is what she did. This is not a complex connector. This is not an idiomatic expression. It's just a nice and appropriate way to connect multiple ideas in this context. Unfortunately, because I... Once again, you can notice how I'm doing that on purpose, time after time. Next sentence, pause, connector, and related to the context not just you know not memorize connectors like also moreover no unfortunately because now it's based on this tone things personally that made me keep thinking about that incident the whole day and i felt extremely bad okay now one thing is i could use some better word at the end instead of bad but i'm looking at the timing and of course i want to finish it on time i could say extremely upset disappointed despondent etc uh, but in in hindsight the time was running out here I also mentioned that I was extremely, uh, I felt extremely bad, and that I do on purpose. This combination of adjective plus adverb will give you a lot of edge over other students because most people just use one of the two. And there's the conclusion, wrapped up easily in one minute, good connectors, good wordings, good idiomatic expressions, complex sentences, simple sentences. Look at the speaking marking criteria for Selfit. Every single criteria is hit. And if you speak like this, there is no doubt that you're going to score a 12 or at least 11. Now, if you want to know the secrets of how I can speak like this and how you can do the same thing, check out our self-paced self 15-hour course that details all the strategies step-by-step -step with multiple hours on speaking as well as other modules plus mock tests, free feedback, and a lot more content. Check it out in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe as well. Take care.